What's going on, Show Nation? It's Movie with Movie Gaming TV, and in today's video, I'm going to give you a positional tier list in MLB The Show 21. Now, what I want you to do is take my opinion, and then take your own opinion, your own experiences, and kind of put that all together to decide what is the best lineup for you. But I'm going to rank all the cards, in my opinion, the best ones to have. I'll give you some budget options along the way as well. So let's go ahead and get into this, all right? So for the catcher position, my opinion, the best catcher, Salvador Perez, Team Infinity 3. He's also going to be our budget beast for the catcher because you can get him for absolutely free. Really, really like this card. 125 on both sides. 96, 93 has the gold defense, 41 speed. I just like 125, 125. Whenever I see that, I do like that. Uh, the other best catcher is Kyle Schwarber. Schwarber's amazing. He's basically like the left-handed version of Salvador Perez. But personally, if you look at my lineup, I like to hit with righties or switch hitters. I don't really like to hit with lefties that much. I just don't like to for whatever reason. I like to use lefties in situations where I'm only going to face righties. I don't like to hit left on left very much. I don't mind hitting with righties like right on right at all. Actually, I, I don't. It doesn't bother me, but not a fan really of hitting left on left that much. I can do it, but I just like from my like diamond dynasty lineup, I don't prefer it. So I use Sorber off the bench. I don't necessarily platoon him with Perez. I'm just more like have him on my bench. Kind of a backup catcher. He's got a lot of positional versatility. Now what I probably should do, to be honest with you, just like looking into catcher position is I should probably get this card to parallel five because he'd be really, really nice. Because you have like 121 power from both sides. He'd have like 100 contact versus left, 102 contact versus right. His defense, I don't value catcher defense that much. doesn't really matter to me too much because I can kind of control the running game by just seeing if they're going to steal or not. Some people don't even steal at all, so it's really not that big of a deal. I feel like you want a slugger behind the dish. That's just my personal opinion. He only has 19 speed, though. I really don't like them when they are that slow. Like He's very, very slow. That's actually something... I really don't like. You're not going to have a ton of speed at catcher. I get it, but this is this is basically, in my opinion, is the third best. I prefer this one more. I just like this one more. 40-some speed. I love 125, 125. They got a lefty look lighter. Cliff Lee, I'm standing 125, 125. I really, really like that. If you do like the more defensive build, JT, a real Muto, he's got good enough hitting stats, balance across the board with the reverse splits. He's got a good swing. He's got 75 speed, so he's really fast. 99 on the arm and 90 on the block. The block's almost more important. Like the arm and the block's what you really want to look at. So he's he's got that. So if you like that balance attack, go with JT, real Muto. Not a bad choice. I'm just more of a, I, I just prefer the slugger. That's what I'd rather have. The fifth best catcher, and at this point, I feel like you ought to have one of those four catchers. The rest of these catchers are outdated. I'd probably put this Posada, like not the uh, one that you get from BR, but the one that you get from the Yankees collection. I'll put him at the fifth spot, but he's a little outdated. This is like a good events warrior right here for you. Uh, just kind of has that... Uh, Good contact if you go up and play like on a Hall of Fame or Legend, um, but at the same time he's he just kind of has like more power than that than those numbers. His defense isn't very good, but he was like the meta catcher for a while at the start of the game. But now just like we have other cards, so it's time to move on. Get one of the the cards that I pointed out in this video. Now at first base. Uh, I'm going to go with Eddie Murray. That's my top first baseman just because he's got diamond defense, 52 speed. He's a switch hitter, and he's got good hitting stats. Eddie, I don't know if I would choose Eddie if I'm going to play an event or if I'm going to play BR. That's really not what I'm looking for. But in a nine-inning game, he does a lot of things to help you win. Plays good defense. Uh, like I said, he's a switch hitter. So, you know, if they're switching in the bullpen and try to match up, he's just like he's got that switch hitter ability. Good from both sides. Good swing. Good speed. He's just my like nine inning guy at first base. I really like him at first base. And I can play who this is technically, I mean, you could argue Vlad Jr. is the best um, first baseman as well, but I like to play him at third base. So that's kind of like, I'd rather have Eddie at first and I can play Vlad at third base. But Vlad technically is either the one or number two uh, first baseman in the game just because he's got unbelievable hitting. And he is better than David Ortiz because when you parallel him up, he's just got better fielding than David Ortiz. You can see he gets up to like that gold fielding. So he's better than David Ortiz. David Ortiz is going to be number three, though. Still super solid and really, really good. He's just almost like better off the bench. But uh, David Ortiz is still a beast in this game. 
Uh, number four, we're going to go Prince Fielder, and he's going to be our budget beast because all you got to do, finish Team Infinity 3. It shouldn't take you that long to do. You can get the Prince Fielder for free. 125 both sides, 110.92. Decent enough defense. Got silver defense, 40 speed, good swing. Kind of hits lefties, like left on left, better than you might think. So this is a really, really good card. I like Prince Fielder a lot. It's cool that he's back in the game this year. Fifth spot, I'm going Pete Alonzo. Just stacked hitting, 105.93. I think he's solid in that regard. Uh, 70 fielding, 38 speed. I just don't really like to use him. Just because, like, the 93 contact doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Um, it's still pretty good contact, I suppose. But I really like 100 plus, like, for the power and for the contact if I can. Especially on something like a tier list where you're, like, trying to rate the best of the best. So our budget option, though, is uh, Prince Fielder for first base. Um, as second base... Uh, my my favorite second baseman is Alfonso Soriano. Um, I wish he had more contact versus right, but this is a beast on Hall of Fame and a beast in events. This is like my favorite card to use in events. Uh, I should say on All Star as well. Really like this card. The 118, 119. He's got super power. Uh, when you play like on like an event or on uh, in Battle Royale, that 95 contact isn't as big of a deal. Um, and ranked seasons is a little bit tough. Something about this card I play really well with. If you're struggling with this card, uh, I suggest you think about his swing. Like he's got like a really open stance and he kind of steps into the ball. This card's really hard to check swing with for whatever reason but i love his defense 93 on the arm massive diamond defense 98 speed just really really well balanced love this card this year i know some people don't but i i really play well with them so i, I gotta roll with them uh at my top spot at second base uh the next uh second baseman i think is the best is jackie robinson 122 125 85 89 uh, 99 speed. He's kind of like a contact hitting version of Soriano. He just doesn't have the arm strength uh, that's quite there. So I'd, I'd go Jackie there. Third, you can go with Simeon. Um, he's very good across the board, too. I almost like hitting with righty, uh, against righties uh, more with him for some reason. He's got a good swing. He's got good defense. 77 speed. I just have him under those two tiers. He's just a little bit lower for me. Some people really, really like him. He's still a really solid card. Uh, number four, we're going to go uh, out of position here. And we're going to go to, well, not out of position, but secondary position, Water Franco. Uh, got a really good swing, switch hitting ability, uh, good enough defense, really good arm strength for a second baseman also. Uh, number five spot, we're going to go secondary position, Trey Turner. Uh, this card just absolutely mashes. And uh, it's just like his defense is too low for me. I'm not a fan of his lower defense, but if you don't mind that, you can put him at second base. I think there's a better position. I'll tell you later in the video where I think you should play this Trey Turner card. Uh, another underrated card. I don't see him much online. I really don't know why. I don't know if it's a lack of contact or what. But this is a really good second baseman too. Like especially if you parallel him up, try to get that contact up, try to get that fielding up a little bit, and his arm strength would go up a little bit. So he's got good arm strength, switch hitting ability, decent enough speed. Uh, Escobar would be solid there. And I don't have this card quite yet. I plan on picking this card up just because I'm trying to collect every single card in the game uh, this year. And I um, there's only a couple I don't have. I don't have Joe Morgan. I don't have Nolan Ryan. And I don't have Larry Walker. I have all the rest of them. Like this is that's my goal this year is just to collect like all the cards. So unfortunately, I don't have Joe Morgan right now. But I probably put him in the seventh spot. I don't know. It's a very weird card to judge because. He's got really good hitting stats. He just has really low power versus left, which I don't like. Uh, he's got good fielding, but he's got like a bad arm. He's got good speed. He's 5'7", which hurts his fielding, but he's 5'7", which makes his strike zone really small because he's really short. But that also, some people don't like to hit with him. I don't know. This is a card that I'm going to go collect. I don't expect this card to be a beast. Uh, I don't really expect this card to be like above those other ones, but I'm definitely going to pick it up because I do like to like, when I do an events lineup sometimes, I just like use like a lot of like fun cards I really don't get to use like when I'm trying to put together my best squad for ranked seasons. You know what I mean? So uh, I'll probably like pick this card up, use it in events and stuff like that just uh you don't need to pay this much for it right now like vlad i went out and bought and uh, you know i flipped uh and then i just go out and buy the card after i've like made a lot of stubs from flipping and then i picked him up but i'm a little, little hesitant like i probably would because i know i could flip 200 300k in a day very easily to pick him up but i'm just kind of waiting on this one because I don't know. I'm going to pick him up definitely, but not not for a little while. So that's kind of where I've got uh, Joe Morgan. Uh, I'd say your budget beasts are definitely going to be mostly from Team Affinity 3 on this one. Your budget beasts here are going to be um, Trey Turner 
and also uh, Escobar and uh, you could use Ozzy Albies as well uh, that's um, you know a lot of people like his swing 125 120 is like solid uh, he's a, he's definitely a budget beast he's got that switch hitting ability he uh, plays down versus righties but you might be able to hit pretty well with him versus right he's got this like huge leg kick in a swing so He's a pretty cool card, just not for me because he's he's got that low contact and power. But a lot of people really like this card, so that that's another option. I mean, there's a lot of options at second base. Uh, I think the Sandberg, you know, you get him like before you get the Prince Fielder in the Team Affinity Collection, basically for the All Star Collection, what have you. I don't, I'd never see this card, but he's actually not too bad. I feel like he's got a lot of sneaky pop with that 118 pop. Um, as far as the rest of them, I mean, Brad Miller, he can be uh, pretty good too. Don't sleep on this Brad Miller. He's got some insane hitting stats. Uh, I like that card. Uh, Jed Lowry, haven't really seen him, but another kind of option. I kind of like Brad Miller more just because he's like a little bit faster and stuff like that, but it's another switching option. Um, let's look through a couple more of these before we move on. I mean, we'll talk about uh, Bogarts at shortstop. Real well-balanced card right there that you could use. Uh, Scope you could use as well at second base. Uh, Tatis, if he's playing up versus lefties and gets more contact, this card's actually super lethal as well. Um, but that's pretty much it for second base. Now, shortstop for me, I like to play uh, the Hawk shortstop. Uh, I have like Trey Turner swing on him. He's got 125 contact, 100 power, like 95 speed, like amazing defense. For me, that's the spot I like to play my cap at right now. Just because I, th I think you would technically put them in the bullpen, but I just like don't like to pitch them out of the bullpen because I feel like it's pretty cheesy. I'm a little bit worried we're going to see that as we get more stack cards, but I do feel like shortstop is like kind of pound per pound. It's kind of like one of the weaker positions. Technically, the best first or the best shortstop in the game is Chipper Jones. You just don't want to play him there. It's just he's so good at hitting that like. If you had to play him at shortstop and you like you had a third and a third baseman and a left fielder that are just super super elite, like you could play him at shortstop. Like he he's just got to be in your lineup, so he technically is the best shortstop. Uh, the next shortstop that I like the most is Trevor Story, but I just feel like this is the one spot where we're ready to get like another tier level of card. Um, I don't know when it's going to be, but he's got amazing fielding. You know, 99, 99, 96. Uh, he's got 91 speed. It's just the hitting. The hitting's fine. He's got a good swing, everything like that. But it's just like it's not up at that like super tier level where it'd be like 110, 110, 110, 110. You know what I mean? It's 96, 104, 110, 194. He's gone from hitting like first or second in some people's lineup lineups when he dropped to like maybe hitting like eighth, seventh, something like that. So he's kind of like gone down. So as new cards have come out. But he's, he's technically probably is the best shortstop. He's like who I would use if I wasn't using my cab just because he's got the defense and the speed and then I hit him lower uh, in my order. But I prefer using the cap over him. Now, Wander Franco, he's really good too. His defense is getting paralleled up as I use this card. You know, get him in the parallel three. You got the diamond defense. It's going to be real solid. He's a very, very solid card. Uh, you could definitely have him over Trevor Story. I'm not going to have like any qualms about that whatsoever because I do like how he has more contact. I like his swing a lot. I like how he has the ability to switch hit. I just, you just got to get that fielding up. You want good fielding at shortstop. Uh, and Trevor's is better than his, but. It is what it is uh, in that regard. Uh, the number four card, and this is going to be our budget beast, is Ronnie Mauricio. This card's super good. Uh, very good on defense, paralleled up, 92, 99, 98. Like, he's real, real smooth on defense. The 66 speed hurts him a little bit. 99, 100, he feels like a beast versus uh, righties. He still got the switch hitting versus lefties. It's just like his hitting numbers are a little bit down. One of my favorite cards this year. Really, really like this uh, Ronnie Mauricio card. I've got him at the four spot. And then we've already talked about uh, Trey Turner a little bit. Again, he just doesn't really have the defense for a not, for a nine-inning shortstop. I'm not really feeling his defense in that spot. We're going to get to his best position right now, actually, as we go look at the third baseman. Best third baseman, Chipper Jones. Second best third baseman is Vlad Jr. He holds it down just well enough defensively to be good, and he's got massive hitting stats. So I feel like he's really, really good in that spot. And then again, Trey Turner, you can kind of hide him uh, over there. You can hide him over there. So difficult to find a 99 speed third baseman with pop. That's very, very rare to find in Diamond Dynasty. That's kind of like a card that even like Wander's pretty close, but it makes me think of a card like, uh, you know, a boosted, like, uh, 
Alberto Mondesi. That's basically the only other card you'll you'll really see with like good pop that plays third base that has 99 speed. And you can hide his defense. It's the same kind of thing as like Vlad's defense. It's gonna make most of the plays. They kind of get like a little bit of a boost on their arm strength just because of uh just kind of how the games worked the last two years. They kind of get like a little bit of boost on the arm strength, so don't worry about that too much. It's gonna have some decent side to side movement. He's gonna be able to charge the ball with his 99 speed. This is a spot, in my opinion, you want to play him. Uh, just hide him over at third base. Uh, have a really fast player with like a lot of hitting. It does take away though. The reason I like to play like Vlad Jr. is Vlad's like a more pure power hitter. So I like to have that at the corner more than Trey. But I think that's like the good spot to play uh, Trey Turner. Uh, we already talked about Wander Franco. We've already talked about Marcus Simeon. You could play him there. Uh, I do like this Castellanos. I think he's an option. Hide his defense over there. Amazing hitting contact from both sides. Good power from both sides. 66 speed, so he's not super slow. Uh, he, you could definitely uh, play him over there as well at third base. Uh, our budget beasts are going to be Trey, Castellanos, and uh, also um, Ronnie can play there too. Ronnie can play at third base as well. Really, really solid. We've talked a little bit about Brad Miller. Uh, I, I'm obviously really high on the Ronnie card. So take your choice out of those and uh, see what you think. Uh, left field. Again, this sounds crazy, but Chipper Jones is actually the best left fielder in the game just because he's a switch hitter with amazing hitting stats. Like you're going to have him in the nine inning lineup. His defense isn't great out on left field. It's not terrible, but he's not going to win a gold glove out there. We're just like hoping the ball gets hit to him as much as possible, and we just need him in the bat and like the cleanup spot. So we can play him out in left field. That's what makes this card so good. Make sure you do the live series collection. Just make sure you do it. There's a lot of good cards you get out of the live series, including our second best left fielder in Mike Trout. So you really are getting both of these out of the live series collection. Soriano is really good. And so. I'm still using a lot of cards from that. I just I I think it's worth your time to do that. I think it's more worth your time by far to do the live series collection than it would be to like do the all star collection for Shohei Otani. Um, so just keep that in mind. They're probably somewhat similar in price. So I don't know. Anyways, the best uh, left field fielder is Chipper Jones. Second place is Mike Trout. Third is going to be Soriano. Like, that's just his natural position anyway in the game. Super good defense. I mean, 98 speed. Like, he's getting to everything in left field. He's like above and beyond for a left fielder. Uh, the next card is uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. Got to have this card in your team. Make sure you do this. Do all th do all the team affinity. Pick up this Ronald uh, Acuna Jr. Uh, it's going to be really, really good in left field because he's got 99 or 97 speed, 99 arm. Uh, he's basically like Soriano with the hitting, except for his swing is better than Soriano. So he's really, really solid. Uh, we also the the next one is like Vlad Guerrero uh, Senior in left field. The thing is, like, you need a parallel five to play him in left field, so he at least has silver fielding, a lot more speed. But you're not going to really want a bronze uh, out in left field too much just because they'll get, like, some bad jumps and stuff like that, and I don't know if you really want that. I do like a couple of these cards, too. I mean, you could try out uh, Tay Oscar out there. He's just not going to be that good on defense. Uh, Garcia is not going to be too bad out there on defense. Good hitting stats for both of them. I like Tay Oscar swing more. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, I guess you could play Bryce Harper out in left field. I mean, I wouldn't have too much of a problem with that. I think of him more as like a right fielder, but you could do that because he has like the the seventy fielding. And uh, who else do I want to talk about? Uh, Jason Dominguez is always an option. We'll talk about him. Uh, with the center fielders. I love using this Griffey card in events, but I don't like to use him too much uh, outside of that. But he's, uh, he's a pretty fun card to use. Brian Reynolds could go out there as well. And um, like a pure, like a true left fielder is like David Justice. Uh, he's got great hitting sets across the board. He just doesn't have very good defense. And uh, this Ralph Kiner, he's pretty fun to hit with. I haven't used him in ranked. I could just probably use him in like events and stuff like that. He doesn't have that great a defense, but like... He's kind of in the mix, but he's not over some of the other players that I've already uh, listed because of his low defense. And like Juan Soto, I also really like. We might get a player of the month, uh, Juan Soto, here soon uh, for the month of July. And if he has a if he has like 125 across the board, to me he will be like the best left uh, left fielder 
even to the like if he gets like Chipper Jones type of stats for his hitting, he'll be the best left fielder. I'll have to figure something out. <laughs> I might move Chipper back to third, or I'll, I'll figure something out. Um, but he he's gonna be really solid. Regard if he gets like anything close to silver fielding, he'll be solid. I don't care what his defense is. This is um just a beast hitter in the game. So he could be in this car could even be on left field. I wouldn't have a single problem with it. He just is nasty. I just like to hit with him versus just just righties. Like I said, I don't really like to use left handed cards. Um, let's go ahead and talk about oh our budget option for this for left field is actually pretty tough. I mean. Yeah, I'd almost say it's gonna be Acuna, but I don't. I'm gonna have to use Acuna for another one. Maybe you try out uh, Tay Oscar or uh, Dolores Garcia, but I guess in this instance, maybe just say like, save up your stubs and try to go after someone for left field. Because I remember putting this together, there isn't like a true budget option that I really like for left field. Um, center field, best center fielder is gonna be Mike Trout. He doesn't have the defense, but this card is just. He's super clutch. Like, he's just the card that you want. What a run for a live series card. Still just this beast into August. Um, 114, 120 is just goaded. It's just like it's the quirks. It's the swing. It's just it's everything about Mike Trout you just got to love. Uh, my second best center fielder in this game right now would be Ronald Acuna Jr. Just because of the speed and everything like that. I really like him out there. But you could also say Soriano. I mean, they're really like the same card. They're, <laughs> they're very, very similar. Soriano's got more defense. So you could say Soriano more. I just kind of like Acuna's swing a little bit more, I guess. So I would probably go with him out there. Uh, the thing is, uh, the best like true center fielder that's like this Jason Dominguez is, is basically like a budget Mickey Mantle. And maybe we'll get that card with the big collection tomorrow. So maybe we'll get a Mickey Mantle. I feel like Mantle or some kind of shortstop would probably be like the best bet just based on what kind of cards we have. It's kind of how I feel like it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be like another pitcher or something like that. But this is kind of like a budget Mickey Mantle. Like unbelievable defense, unbelievable speed, switch hitter, good power, good contact. Really like Jason Dominguez. He reminds me a lot of Ronnie. Like them together is like a nice thing to have on your team. Diamond defense, switch hitting, good hitting. Um, <clears throat> good. Like he has a much better speed than Ronnie does, but... Two solid cards to consider. Uh, you could also, uh, as we've talked about a lot, you can play Trey Turner out here. I just don't think his de that the fact that his defense is low. I know he has 99 speed, but the fact that his defense is low, it just doesn't feel as good. Like I almost feel like I've used both like uh, Griffey, who has 84 speed, but he has the 93 fielding and the 94 reaction. I almost feel like he he plays like better defense than this Trey Turner with the 99 speed. Like I feel like he gets to the ball more. It's very strange. I don't know if it's something for MLB The Show 21. Let me know how you feel about it. But I do feel like he plays it better. I'd rather play this Trey Turner at third. But you can play him at center field if you need to. Just try to get his parallel up so he at least has silver fielding before you use him out there or what have you. Uh, and then my last like true center fielder here is like Byron Buxton. Uh, Byron Buxton. It's just all about the defense. You just hit him in the ace by uses speed some people hit really well with him i don't really like his hitting stats i don't for whatever reason i just don't hit very well with him i like almost hit better with the live series one it makes no sense but super popular card he's still in the mix and uh, we'll go with our budget beast as being acuna because we got to use him for like one spot here and so we'll go with uh we'll go with him as our budget beast center field our 97 speed 99 arm uh gets up to the gold fielding once you get him to parallel three and he's got like super elite hitting so uh, I'm going to go with Acuna in that spot. Right field, still the best right fielder in the game would be Mike Trout. He just is just the best hitting. Uh, Vlad Sr., I'm going to go in right field too. Uh, I love this car already. Uh, just amazing contact, amazing power. Uh, his fielding's only at 70. I'm going to get that up to 75 or what have you. But he's got 99 arm strength and he's going to have 86 speed. I just like how he has balance hitting. He's got a cannon for an arm. He's gonna have decent enough speed, and I don't know. I, I'm 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 already a big fan of this card. I played two games with him. I've hit really well with him already, so I'm really excited about this card. Uh, then I would go uh, Acuna just because again I like to hit with righties. This is his natural position. 97 speed and 99. He's gonna be a beast out in the outfield, and he's got great hitting. Uh, Bryce Harper, I would go in the fourth spot, uh, 116, 108, 125, 91. I've hit some perfect, perfect home runs with him. Um, 
just I don't know. Like I said, it's just a personal thing with me. I don't like to hit with lefties. He's very expensive as well. So I, I don't know. Uh, is he worth the subs? If you really like to use him, he might be. I think this uh, judge is a little bit. Uh, this judge isn't too bad. He's just a little bit too tall for me to use. And then uh, Bichette's also like real good, but his defense is so bad. His hitting is so good, but his defense is just so, so bad. The other card, I told you I don't have, I'm missing a couple. I'm missing this card. I'm going to, the reason I haven't bought this card is because I think I need like three or four more wins in ranked seasons to hit 40. I'm just going to select this card. So 125, 125 for Walker, 99, 80. It just seems like you're going to have to platoon him because he's not very good versus lefties, but he's nasty versus righties. Man, I'm not probably like, this is not a bad card at all. His speed's a little bit low. I mean, you could parallel up his defense. It's really, it's like, I think we're, I know I'm a little, I was a little bit underwhelmed by this card at first, but man, it's, it's really not that bad. He's going to have a super good swing. It's just that lower speed. I think you'd have to put him, I guess, just a little bit under Bryce Harper, but like they're kind of like the same card. So uh, take that in consideration. And then number six, we're just going to have Jason Dominguez. And again, our budget beast is, uh, is Ronald Acuna Jr. So I'm, what I'm kind of thinking is there's really not a lot of like true budget out options in the outfield compared to the infield. I feel like the infield, you could have a lot more. And then the outfield... Uh, it's just there isn't as um, there isn't as much. I mean, Mullins just doesn't. There's always like a problem with something with them uh, out there as far as the budget beast or the outfield. So maybe save over your stubs to try to get some of your outfield cards. To be honest with you, all right. So we've gone through all of those. Let's go ahead and go through the uh, starting pitchers here. All right. So these are my favorite starting pitchers uh, in the game. Maybe I'll put them uh, in somewhat of an order too, uh, for at least like. Uh, my stuff. My favorite starting pitcher in the game is Eber Cabrera, just because I'm a big fan of hard sinkers in this game. I think it's the toughest pitch to hit. It sets up everything else. So he is my favorite card, uh, my favorite pitching card. I like Corbin Burns a lot. It's the same idea. He has a hard sinker. Now I like to pitch with sinkers and cutters, changeups and sliders. If they have all those, that's like the ideal pitcher to me. Um, sometimes they don't. Like Cabrera doesn't have a cutter. Uh, I think like uh, Al Leiter doesn't have a change up. You just kind of work with like what you can go with. But uh, Cabrera, Burns, Al Leiter, and then Cliff Lee. All these are really solid. Lance Lynn. And then uh, also who's still solid is uh, Tom Glavin. Those are my top six. I really think they're by far the best because they do have the sinker in the cutter. Now, if you like to pitch with uh, fastballs, more power to you. I just feel like when I use a card like DeGrom, who I've got in the seven spot, I have to think too much. Like I have to, there's so much more thought that goes into pitching with a, with a, a card like this. And I just feel like fastballs are so much easier to hit than sinkers. So I really don't prefer to use Jacob DeGrom. I got Otani next. I don't have this card yet, um, but... I don't know how he would, like, I really don't, I, like, 125, 125 is really nice. I just don't particularly like to use, like, Nolan Ryan. I'll tell you this much. This is Chrissy Matthewson is, like, my least favorite card in the entire game. I cannot stand this card. I like using sinkers and cutters. I really do. I like pitches with hard horizontal, horizontal movement. So, I would, give, I just try to match my starting rotation. I'm telling you, like, Cabrera, Burns, Leiter, Cliff Lee, Lance Lynn. Uh, and also um, another pitcher I, I really like is Tom Glavin. He's still super, super good. He's got a really, really hard sinker when he's paralleled up. That's what I really like. DeGrom, Otani, um, Crochet, wherever Crochet is in this mix. Where are you? Uh, crochet. Uh, also Peralta, they're okay, but the budget beasts that you're going to want are from Team Affinity 2. You're going to want Cabrera, and you're going to want Cliff Lee. That's my rotation. And let's take a look at the bullpen. Uh, the weakest spot probably in the game right now is left-handed relievers. Like, maybe we need, like, Billy Wagner real bad. <laughs> like, we could use Billy Wagner real bad. Um... 
But the Golds are still getting it done. Um, the number one uh, really pitcher in the game, in my opinion, is Kenley Jansen. Cutter, slider, sinker, changeup. He's got everything. Hard sinker, amazing cutter, like 99 control, 99 break. He's super, super solid. Number two, I still have a role as Chapman. He just causes problems. Like, he just throws it really hard. And he's 6'8". Uh, they, got, they got his height at 6'4". Uh, I thought he was taller than that. That might be like an error or something like that. Uh, that's kind of strange. Maybe, I, I don't know. I thought he was taller than that, but <laughs> it says 6'4", so I don't know. Anyways, he's he's really, really good. He's got the hard, hard sinker. He's got the hard fastball. He's got a slider that feels way slower, and he's got a splitter on top of that. He's still, to me, the second best relief pitcher. Number three, I have Alex Reyes because he's basically a lot like Cabrera. just has that, like, Outlier sinker, four seam sinker, 12 six changeup. He's got all the pitches 125 H for nine, 47 stamina. Solid, solid card. Uh, Mario Rivera, I got in the fourth spot just because he has like control. He is like a five pitch pitcher. He's got the cutter, the four seam, the sinker, the slider, the changeup. You can mix up all the pitches. Um, he's got like really, really good control, it feels like, throughout all of his pitches as well. Like he does it on the changeup, but like the changeup, you just really like throwing that below the zone, anyways. 121, 115. Like really, really solid. Uh, I've got Gossage, the this one, the 300 save club. I've got him in the uh, fourth spot or the fifth spot, excuse me. Um, he's just overpowering in a way. Like he's got that outlier fastball. He's got the hard sinker, and then he's got a slurve and a changeup. So he's kind of got like a nice. He's got like a sinker slurve mix. He's got a changeup, and he's got an outlier fastball with 125, 125. He's just overpowering. Lots of stamina too. Um, definitely solid. Uh, Gregory Soto. He's got the hard sinker. He's got the slide of the force in the changeup. I just don't really – his windup feels a little funky to me, but he's, like, probably going to be in my bullpen for a while because he's a lefty with the hard sinker. I just have – I've been using Chapman more over him, but he's kind of, like, right in that mix. And then also uh, Zach Britton. I mean, he throws, like, a 100-mile-an-hour sinker. He throws a good slider. The only problem is he doesn't, doesn't really have a changeup. Like, a really good player is probably going to hit this card, but he's pretty good for the – for everything else the problem is if you didn't do the daily moments i don't know how uh you're gonna get this card at this point but he's really solid and then also i go to jake deepman just because jake deepman has 125 101 i know he doesn't say that he has that good of control but with pinpoint i can dot his sinker and uh he's got a very deceptive motion he's just a very valuable card to have in your bullpen uh, the other ones that you could have is uh, uh, Dennis Eckersley is really nice because he's got like a lot of control, sinker, slider. And then uh, also Rob Dibble just kind of blows you away. Um, not really a fan of Hayter or Kimbrell or Nen or Liam Hendricks or really even Lee Smith, uh, to be honest. Not I think Jake McGee, no. Like the rest of them are just kind of not that great. Adam Wainwright is okay. Um I'm going to show you real. <laughs> I kind of like this Raleigh fingers, but the rest of them, I just don't really feel like they're that good. Uh, it, if you can't get Jansen and Gossage right now, just get Eckersley and get Rob Dibble. I know they're really expensive, but that's what you, what you would want to roll with there. This to me is the bullpen that you want to shoot for. And this to me is the starting rotation. Lance Lynn is a lot like Cliff Lee, except for he's right-handed and he's got like really good control, but at the same time, I wouldn't even mind putting in uh, Tom Glavin for him. Let me know down in the comment section, like if you want, if you have a particular card that you want me to review, I'll try to check in and uh, give you like a couple sentences on it or what have you. But the budget beast is definitely Alex Reyes. Like this is a super good card. You need to have that card. You need to have that card. All right. Well, that's pretty much the positional tier list for August. Take a look at it in September. Hopefully we get an awesome card in the collection tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you then. Peace out.